October 30th, Monday, 2017, day 284, the day the Donald Trump Zionist regime began to crumble. Americans are anxiously awaiting Donald Trump's tweets. Every few seconds, the Americans go to Donald Trump's Twitter account to see what he has to say. It should be good this week. I mean, how do, how do you say that in Russia, in Russian? This ought to be good? Well, it may be good for Russia and China, but quite frankly, it's not going to be very good for America. And that's probably a reason why the 36-year-old slumlord Kushner ran over to Saudi Arabia. Maybe they need the Saudi king to help them out. Maybe they forgot that it's the American people's help that they really need. So let's go ahead and document this. This is a big day in the Donald Trump Zionist regime. Mueller came out and arrested a few people. He put some of them on house arrest. One of them is cooperating. Let's see if I can pronounce his name right. George Papadopoulos. Well, I won't even say it. We'll just call him George from now on. Uh, George is cooperating. He was arrested at an airport. I guess he was trying to go to Greece, and they arrested him. That was months ago, and he's been cooperating. And uh, Donald Trump has not been tweeting for about seven hours. It says here, the silence is deafening. This is a big day. I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump is sweating. Okay, let's keep on looking here. So Manafort, everybody knew, or pretty much everybody guessed, that Manafort was going to be the first target. He was arrested, uh, or I guess he posted bail. And uh, I think the bails are up to like $10 million, $5 million. I'm not sure which one is $10 million. But here's the thing. This is probably something that all us peasants, all the unwashed masses, this is what we need to keep in mind, what we can never forget. That the game is rigged. I mean, this guy, the charges are big, but he posts bail, and he's at, he's at home on house arrest. Even if he is prosecuted, he'll get out early. Some politician will pardon him. You see, this is the thing. There are two sets of laws today. If you or I get arrested, we're not going to be able to afford bail, and we're going to sit in jail. But they, the elite... You see, I mean, this is a rigged game. Now, trust me, the FBI and Mueller, he, they're, try, they're trying to do their best, I guess. They're trying to make a statement here that nobody is above the law, as Hillary Clinton is scot-free. I mean, Jared Kushner, I mean, he's over there in Saudi Arabia somewhere. Okay, so let's keep it going here. This guy, George, um, he's cooperating, and... I'm not really sure if this is the real George, but it says here um, it's not possible that he can give out any interviews because he's in Greece. So he may be over there in Greece, which is probably a pretty good idea, especially if you wanted to be in a safe place far away from the Israeli-Russian mafia. I mean, a small Greek village would be a good place because any out-of-towner, any assassin would stick out like a sore thumb over there. So, I mean... I'm rooting for him to stay safe. Uh, this is a very dangerous game all these people are involved in. I think Manafort is more afraid of the Russians than he is Mueller. Um, but uh, here's one thing I want to ponder, or we'll speculate on it, because at one time there was a, a dictator, a colonel, a military colonel in Greece, and he was temporarily a dictator. He died in prison. He has the same name as George, and I wonder if George is a distant relative of him. Or, you know, because you know, Donald Trump likes to hire people with a pedigree, you see? And it would not surprise me if this George character claimed to be a relative of a dictator, and Trump says, yeah, come on on a team. I love a guy with a pedigree. Okay, and we'll quickly, briefly say that this is not the George. The Internet people are uh, messaging and tweeting this George on the left. That's not the real George. Um, Again, the real George is a little younger than him. Apparently, he's in Greece now, hiding. He's cooperating with the FBI. And if, again, of course, he has the same name as a colonel who became a military dictator in Greece from 67 to 73. Now, that dictator died in prison in 1999. You know, this is just all 
basic information. I don't know if they're related. It doesn't really matter. But here's what really matters. Because every time we investigate these political criminals, every time, bar none, we can always track them back to an Israeli corporation. I mean, the guy lobbied for an Israeli corporation. That's the common denominator with all these government criminals. They all have some sort of connection to an Israeli corporation, a lobbyist. They got their, their, their shills. They sell out to Zion. They sell out their country for money. That's all a lobbyist is. Manafort, this George Kerry, that's all they are. They sell their soul, they sell their country to a foreign power for money. And of course, we know who controls the money. We know who controls the Federal Reserve banking cartel. We, you know, we have to include reality, reality into this picture. I mean, if we're going to look this equation over, we cannot forget the money and all these so-called Gentiles who sell their soul. Okay, it's, uh, so here he is. He's cooperating. Many people think George is going to be the most damaging part to Trump. Look at Trump here. I mean, this Trump guy, he cannot stop lying. Look at this. Trump says, Manafort's misdeeds occurred years ago. Out and out lie. I mean, here's the thing. These lobbyists lie, cheat, steal, and break the law every damn day of their life. As long as they cheat for Zion, they stay out of jail. But if they turn on the Zionist, they end up going to jail. I mean, if you sleep with the dogs you get up with fleas. So that's why Americans are looking forward to Donald Trump's tweets this week, because they should be good. I mean, they will be lies. There will be many a lies, and he will be delusional. So that begs the question, is Donald Trump delusional, or is he just lying? Or uh, one guy said, um, I think one person said, Donald Trump's lies are delusional. I think that he's all the above. I believe that he's a liar and he's delusional. And somehow, he'll probably end up getting out of this. You realize that I don't think there's ever been a president of the United States who ever went to jail. I mean, I'm going to, you know, try to disappoint all those liberal progressive snowflakes out there. They all want Donald Trump in jail, but here's the thing. There's never been a president of the United States who was arrested. I mean, they all get pardoned. I mean... I mean, we're, again, we're trying to keep it real here. Now, of course, there always could be a first, an unprecedented time where... But if you're going to put Donald Trump in jail, I'm pretty sure you've got to put him in the same jail cell with Hillary. Now, that would be a beautiful sight, wouldn't it? Donald Trump and Hillary in the same jail cell. Now, that is a picture I would pay for. Trust me, I would pay good money for that picture. But, but again, it's not going to happen. I mean, if you put Hillary, if you put Hillary and Trump in jail, I mean, where do you start? I mean, where do you stop? Obama, Bush. I mean, you can't stop at that point. Okay, I'll briefly bring this up. You're going to have to do your own investigation on this. I mean, this is probably definitely something Mueller is looking into. But this rabbit hole goes deep. I mean, this is one deep, dark, black hole. And I'm just trying to give you a little bit of this history on this uh, boss of all bosses guy here, Simeon, because uh, this could be the fellow that Manafort is afraid of. You see, you know, we have, to, we have to include everything here. Now, this guy is living in Moscow. This is the guy, the boss of all bosses, that all the law enforcement agencies are aware of. I mean, he is the creme de la creme in organized criminal behavior, people are scared of this guy. I mean, it's, it's no doubt about it. They're scared of him. And not only is law enforcement afraid of him, I mean, why did Hillary Clinton not bring this connection up in the uh, campaign? It's probably true that Hillary Clinton is even a scared of this guy. Or she's either afraid of him or she thought she could easily beat the clown, Trump, and or all the above. I, I guess that Hillary Clinton is yes. Hillary Clinton is a scared of this guy. She will not talk about him and Trump connection. And also she had it set up. We'll go into the Tony Podesta story. She also had it set up that she could probably easily beat the clown. But uh, but here's the thing. I'll leave you with this: is uh, it's no coincidence 
that Donald Trump builds the Golden Towers. He builds the towers and he sells these units overpriced to criminals. You know, hey, you you connect the dots. You put you make your own decision in here. But what uh, the basic information is about this boss of all bosses is he still lives freely in Moscow. He's still pulling the chains. And I'm um, not sure if he's going to be able to get a message to Manafort or not. But again, I'm not really sure any Americans really give a shit about Manafort. I mean, I hear Manafort spent over $1 million on his suits and clothes. I hear he went to an antique store and spent a $1 million on rugs. I mean, the guy is peddling power and influence. While Americans, you and I have to go around and pick up the breadcrumbs. You and I are on a damn snap card, and this guy's peddling power and influence in Washington, D.C. to not only the Republicans, to the Democrats, on both sides of the aisle. He's selling his soul out. I mean, nobody gives a shit about these people. Again, we're just, we're just documenting the facts here. Is uh, Mueller investigating it? I'm pretty sure he is. But you notice that mainstream media is not really talking about this guy. All I can really say is not only is Manafort afraid of him, not only is Hillary Clinton afraid of him, I'm pretty sure mainstream media is afraid of this guy. So that's probably what Mueller's got on his hand. Mueller's dealing with some very, very incredibly scary people, and the American empire is crumbling. The whole damn country is crumbling, falling down, and what is the Zionist princess up to? Well, this is, this is a good one. We cannot leave this out. She just had a birthday. And apparently her whole birthday was ruined because of, you know, all the shit that's going down. Can, can you imagine anybody more spoiled and rotten than a Zionist princess who grew up in the Golden Towers? And I can imagine all her birthdays were just perfect. But she just doesn't understand why my family doesn't understand. This is my birthday. Who cares if Mueller is bringing down my daddy's Zionist empire? Oh, man, these people. I mean, is the whole damn family delusional? I mean, it's good that a lot of these characters are staying out of the limelight because the more I hear about these Trumps, I mean, they are just a group of delusional people. Dear mama, dear mama, unbelievable. Okay, well, we cannot leave out the 36-year-old slumlord. We cannot leave him out. It's a very important day, and quite frankly, there are 200 million very disappointed Americans. Yeah, I mean, this the New Yorker says there's millions of Americans who are disappointed that it wasn't Jared who was arrested and handcuffed. No, I, I have to correct them. It's probably over 200 million Americans who are extremely disappointed that this kid could get away, but you know, hey, the game's not over yet. More breaking news when it comes to the Zionist matrix of power. They take their money, they take their fake money, and they buy up the Hollywood producers, directors, actors. Well, another one is biting the dust. Apparently, Kevin Spacey is being exposed, and Netflix is going to cancel his very popular show. But there was a, a uh, well, one kid speaks out. I don't really know who this Anthony Rapp is, but he's accusing Kevin Spacey of, you know, sexual advances when he was only 14 years old. Well, to these Hollywood people, that's just standard operating procedure. That's SOP. I mean, look at Weinstein. I mean, these people in Hollywood are untouchable. Yeah, just like the politicians. They do as they please. Well, talking about criminal lobbyists and other politicians, Tony Podesta is stepping down. Yeah, it's become apparent that his firm is turning up in this indictment that Tony Podesta, Hillary Clinton, they are involved in this indictment. And this is something that the little progressive snowflakes, the liberal snowflakes, they're not going to really understand this. But you know, you know, the kids are kind of dumb. They went to public school. They don't understand that there's no, there's no difference between the left wing and the right wing. They're all connected. They're connected with the lobbyists. And we know who the lobbyists work for. So you have to read between the lines here. I'm just hoping that these liberal progressive snowflakes wake up. I'm not optimistic. But I'm, all you have to do is read between the lines. Manafort is arrested. Tony Podesta, uh, he 
steps down. Okay, what is the connection? The connection is that there are certain people who are above the politicians, the lobbyists, and they pull the strings of everybody. And of course, they have power plays like Clinton and the Podestas thought that, yeah, they would put Trump up to the top there because they could easily beat the clown. And Donald Trump would do all he could. You, you notice why Donald Trump said so many stupid things on the campaign trail? Donald Trump did not really think he was going to win. Donald Trump knew that he was the clown that was supposed to help Hillary Clinton get elected. But during the end there, it started to be clear that everybody in the damn country despised and hated the witch. Even Donald Trump. Donald Trump ain't, is not that stupid. He understood that Americans hated that witch so much that it was possible Donald Trump was going to get elected. And that's exactly what happened. I predicted. Everybody predicted. Anybody with a brain predicted that you could have dragged out your local dog catcher and that man could have beat Hillary Clinton if it was a fair election. I mean, if the, if the electronic voting machines on the up and up, Hillary Clinton could not have beaten a dog catcher. And Donald Trump the clown won. And, and here's where we're at. Is China happy? Of course China's happy. Is Russia laughing? Everybody in the world is happy that the American empire is crumbling. Why? Because we put our nose in places that it doesn't belong. you got to understand, when America was great, when the Gentiles ruled America, we kept our nose out of other people's businesses. Americans did not want to go to World War I, no. You know, the Zionists pushed us in there. Americans did not want to enter World War II, no. The Americans did not want to go. It was the Zionists who pushed us in there, and now they rule the whole empire. They rule, and what's happening is the empire is crumbling. I'm sad to say that as the Zion empire crumbles, I mean, you can forget about that huge factory breaking ground or a good job for your Gentile grandchildren. Forget about it. Your grandchildren don't have a prayer, I'm sorry to tell you.